Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So, I'm doing that thing again where I am off my channel for way too long and it's starting to make me anxious. So, I am filming, I guess you could say, a voiceover. Um, I know a lot of people say that they prefer for me to be on camera, like with my face, but a lot of you guys say that you don't care if it's a voiceover or not. So, I'm doing a voiceover. Um, it won't be anything permanent or anything. It's just that I am in the process right now of finishing up my book, which I'm trying to launch by next month. Um, the date is coming up rapidly because these days are just going by so quickly so I have to put the final touches on it um, so yeah that's been consuming my time but also I started a second video I mean a second channel for my tarot videos uh, in case you guys didn't know I'll link it down the, link it down below and tarot takes up a lot of energy especially when I'm doing like the zodiac signs and also when I am uh, doing my personal readings that takes up a lot of energy as well but I wanted to come on here and address something that a lot of people were asking me about and it is the topic of guilt um, a lot of people were asking me because for some reason um, my views in my how to cut off your dysfunctional family and my narcissistic abuse um, narcissistic parents video uh, sometimes the views just spike out of nowhere. I don't know where the traffic is coming from, but I'll get a bunch of comments like, how do you deal with the guilt? How do you deal with the guilt of going no contact with a narcissist or just with an abusive family member in general? So I'm going to basically, basically address that in this um, little voiceover. So pretty much when it comes to feeling guilty about abandoning quote unquote your abusers you have to understand that you're not really abandoning them um in a sense you are but you're really not don't project your feelings of abandonment onto them because you respond to abandonment much more differently than they do i guarantee you that um a lot of times when we've been raised by a narcissist or by an abusive person or we're dating an abusive person or something like that we have this overwhelming fear of being abandoned by them and it makes us feel so anxious and overwhelmed and hurt and destroyed to even think of being abandoned by them or we think about in the past when we were abandoned by um someone who was abusive or someone who we had a trauma bond with and the severe pain of it all and even the thoughts of suicide that come with that we automatically project that onto our abusers and we think that we never want them to feel the way that we feel um, when we get abandoned but i can almost assure you that that's not the same if you genuinely have a trauma bond with someone you abandoning them is not going to cause them to spiral it might but it won't be from a way a sense of I feel like there's something wrong with me I feel defective I feel like no one loves me and things of that sort they will more so grieve over the fact that they have lost control over you and then they will probably go out and find some more supply or someone else to abuse in order to fill that void as sick as it sounds um, and again, these people, I'm not saying that they're not human beings, that they, that you should, you know, treat them like complete trash and not care, but you have to put things in perspective here. You are the one that's being abused. You're the one that's struggling, struggling, sorry, and suffering through the relationship. Are you hurting them in some way? No. Um, are you uh, causing them grief? No. It's like, I know people who have even said that they have been in the hospital because of their narcissist, even if it's not physical abuse, the emotional and psychological abuse that happens from a narcissist or from an abusive person in general or abusive family. Um, they'll end up in the hospital because of the stress. Um, don't underestimate how much emotional abuse actually takes a toll on on your physical health so it's like if you're going through all of that and you're in that much pain look around at your abusive family or your abusive parents or your abusive partner do they go through that do you put them through that no like you are struggling they are not you are suffering they are not it's the kind of relationship where it is a one-sided parasitic relationship where one I wish I would have looked this up beforehand because <laughs> I, I like to have exact facts um, and I forget what the exact type of relationship is called um, in biology. Y'all, I graduated so long ago. Um, I forget what the type of exact relationship is called, but I'm actually going to do a video on different types of parasitic relationships and it's going to be um, in relation to um, actual biological uh, relationships. But like I was saying, um, it's the one-sided parasitic relationship where one is benefiting and the other is not so therefore there's no need to feel any type of guilt and also understand that you have been primed to feel guilty for cutting them off because like i said before they are the abusers they are feeding off of your life force and they are you know they are benefiting from you being a victim so therefore they have primed you to feel guilty so that that guilt can keep you stuck 
never underestimate the power of guilt tripping when it comes to a narcissist or an abusive person in general um they have a tendency to try to turn things around on you or be like oh well i'm your parent how could you do this to me i gave you life and just understand this okay just because someone gave you life someone fed you clothed you and things like that that means nothing um and i say that very boldly that means nothing and i know a lot of uh, parents from the older generations would clutch their pearls at a comment like this. What? I fed you and I had a roof over your head. So no, that means nothing. And I'm going to say it means nothing because that is a common thing that abusers use in order to make you feel guilty to stay. And that goes for abusive partners too. Oh, I took you in. Oh, I pay your bills. Oh, I did this or that for you. I bought you this and that. Like that's something common. Um, until they can say that they have emotionally nurtured you and cared for you and loved you, then they haven't done much for you. And I'm going to say that boldly. And I will also say, because I've heard this from, who did I hear this from? Teal Swan. And it clicked and it made sense in my head that love is actually more important than physical things like food and whatever else. Because if you notice that when someone is holding love from you or if you're not being loved properly, you lose the desire to even eat. You lose the desire to bathe. So it's like, Yes, those physical things are important. Yes, you should count your blessings for the things that you have physically, um, like in the material world. But never let someone make you feel like because they got you things or because they took care of you, something they were supposed to do in the material world, that you're supposed to um, feel like they've done so much for you if they have withheld love from you purposely at that. Because abusive families, parents, partners, they withhold love purposely. It's not something that's done by accident. It's done purposely to keep you stuck and to keep you a victim. So there's no need to feel guilt. And on top of that, a lot of people who were raised in dysfunctional or abusive family structures, they have also experienced something called infantilization. I hope I'm saying that word right. Infantilization, where basically they have been treated like a child purposely or they have been put down so much that now they feel like they can't survive in the real world. I'm going to go into more detail about that in another video, but if you really study um, the patterns of dysfunctional families, a lot of times they will always put you down, um, always make you feel like everything you're doing is wrong, never encourage, encourage your talents. Um, some of them will go as far as to never teach you how to do basic things. Like I've seen people on dysfunctional family forums who have never learned how to iron, who have never learned how to do laundry, who've never learned how to pay taxes. And it's not something that's done by accident. It's something that's done purposely because if your abuser can infantilize you and keep you dependent on them forever, um, then they never have to worry about losing their victim. They never have to worry about losing their supply. So, I mean, you have to deal with that um, when you're cutting off your dysfunctional family. So that's something that you should be focused on more so than um, feeling the guilt because you have to put all that energy and effort into actually growing up. Um, children of dysfunctional families, they usually never grow up even as adults. So we have to put, I say we because I'm in the same pool with you guys, we have to put our energy into actually growing up and functioning as adults and we don't have time to feel guilty about what the abuser is doing or how they're feeling about leaving, about us leaving or what the rest of the family is going to say or what your partner's family is going to say. Or I used to feel guilty about the same topic until I found out that the abuse was on purpose and that changed the game for me. There's no need to feel any type of guilt. That means the person is consciously choosing, regardless of their abusive background, regardless of what they've been through, they are consciously choosing to abuse you. There's no need to feel any type of guilt. And if you do feel the guilt, feel it and let it pass. Feel it and let it pass. Remind yourself of what you've been through and let it pass. And after that, you will be fine. Trust and believe. If they can sleep at night without any guilt, knowing what they have done to you, then I promise you, you will get used to sleeping at night away from them um, and feeling that little bit of guilt at, at you doing nothing. If you think about it, you doing nothing wrong. You putting your well-being first. Um, they sleep good at night. You will sleep good at night with time eventually. And I do applaud anybody who sent these, this question in because that means that, you know, your humanity is still intact, that you are still, still considering other people's feelings, um, which is a good thing. I'm not going to say that that's a, a terrible thing. You shouldn't be doing that, but make sure you're considering your own because that's what we have been taught to consider other feeling, other people's feelings and not consider our own. So with time, you will learn how to consider other feeling, people's feelings, but at the same time, consider your own feelings and take care of your own well-being. That doesn't mean that you become narcissistic and you just go, okay, I don't care about anybody else but me completely. 
no, we don't have to go to that extreme. We can still, you know, care about people, empathize with people, put ourselves in other people's shoes. But the trick is finding balance by caring about what we have been through, caring about our own mental health and caring about ourselves. And also, I forgot to point out, if it sounds a little different, the audio is because I already turned the um, recorder off and then I remembered this part and I was like, hold on, I got to add this part in the end. Um, Also, because I know specifically a lot of people have been saying that when it comes to cutting off their dysfunctional family, that they're worried about what everyone else, the other family members are going to say or the other family members are going to think. Just remember that anybody who truly loves you, they will understand why you have to disconnect from specific toxic family members. Like, for example, my sister, she would never, ever in her life come out and say, like, well, that's messed up that you would cut so-and-so off. You want to know why? Because she is able to empathize with me and put my herself in my shoes when it comes to the way that I was treated, even if she wasn't treated specific ways. You see what I'm saying? So that is what family truly is. And those are the people whose opinions you can care about. If it's a family member or family members who are just like judging you or not even trying to understand, that's not your family anyway. They need to be cut off anyway. So um, there's no need to feel guilty or to worry about what they think about you and I know that's easier said than done but it's something that you will get used to it's kind of like a muscle that you will build um not caring what people think and again I can do a whole nother video on this because I am good for it um (laughs) that is my specialty not caring what people think and doing what I want to do so um I can do a separate video on that if you want but I also see this opportunity as a way for you to practice not caring what people think because it's a life skill that you are going to need especially if you know you are in abuse you were abused as a child you come from a dysfunctional background um you have been trained to overthink about what people think of you to be extremely self-conscious to always um be absorb observing other people's emotions and forgetting your own and that is a survival technique for children who have been abused because um observing everyone else's emotions is what would keep you safe learning how to duck away from um your abusive family members when they were in a rage or you know learning how to people please so that then they won't judge you or hurt you or make fun of you or whatever else that they were doing when you were younger it's like studying other people's emotions as a way to help you navigate and help you survive through the emotional or sometimes physical abuse so that has been programmed very deeply in you So that's why it is difficult for you to just kind of snap out of it and stop caring what people think about you um, because it's a defense mechanism. But now as an adult, you no longer need that defense mechanism in order to survive. So now it's time to reprogram your mind and to rid yourself of that defense mechanism. And that takes time and that takes practice. So this is a perfect opportunity for you to practice not caring what people think. Um, They're going to talk about you. They might call you and try to talk about you. They might say stuff about you on Facebook it's fine. I'm not going to say who cares because you care. Um, because it took me a while to get to this point. I almost was like, well, who cares what they say? You care because it took me a while to get to this point as well. Um, I feel like it's naturally more in me to not care, like by my personality, also by my zodiac sign being an Aquarius. But, um, yeah, initially you do care, um, as a human being, of course, initially it does sting, but it's just like, it's something, like I said, it takes practice and it's like building of a muscle when you start to realize that everybody has their bad traits about them. Everybody has a shadow side. Everybody has things about them that they don't like. Everybody's walking around here insecure. There's very few people that I know that are genuinely fine with themselves, who've never done anything wrong, who We've never experienced guilt or shame or anything else. It's very few people walking around like that. So when you take that approach, it's easier to not care what anybody thinks. Especially people who, like I was saying before, they don't even have the ability to put themselves in your shoes. Like they're not even empathetic and they're not even able to see things from your perspective. That means they're lacking in emotional intelligence. And in that case, you really really don't need to care what they have to um what they have to say or their opinion on who you choose to disconnect from and like i said this is a very great exercise in learning how to not care what people think and that will help you not just in this situation it'll help you out throughout your whole life you'll be put in situations all the time where um you're going to have to step out of your comfort zone and people are going to judge you harshly so this is a perfect time to build that muscle trust me that's the only reason i can get on youtube and do what i can do and say what i say um without feeling any amount of shame or without feeling nervous like oh should i post this should I not post this um it's it's touchy it's sensitive I do it anyway because I have built that muscle of knowing who I am knowing where I stand knowing my intentions and 
just going for it. So build that muscle and that will help you in other areas of your life as well. So this is a perfect opportunity to stop caring what people think and for you to really affirm yourself and love yourself. Whenever you're feeling that guilt, it's the perfect opportunity to bond with yourself and to tell yourself like, it's okay, you're not a bad person. And to really just take that time out to really, like I said, dive into yourself and pay attention to your own emotions, which is something that you've probably never done because you've been trained from childhood to look at everyone else's and care about everyone else's but yours. Okay, so I am done rambling. Um, I hope that this was helpful to you. Again, I thank you guys so much for your support. And um, I'll try to get on camera for my next couple of videos. But, you know, the book is my top priority right now because that, that date is coming up rapidly. So, um, yeah, I think that my next video, I actually have some old footage that me and my sister filmed. Um, it's like a, a, a guest celebrity zodiac signs um, video. And I'm I am editing that so that I can put that up in the meantime while I, um, in between content, I have some old content that I can uh, edit and put up in the meantime. So thank you guys so much for listening, watching, whatever, <laughs> and um, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.